I want to introduce and, and to invite the Honorable Prime Minister who has really been behind these efforts for some time and spared no efforts really in making the funding available to the WASCO to implement this project in his capacity as Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Honorable Prime Minister, we want to thank you very much and invite you to address this gathering this morning. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, let me first of all recognize the presence of my friend, Honorable President Austri, the Minister responsible for Water Resource Management, the Chairman and members of Board of Duasco, uh, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Water Resource Management, the General Manager and Staff of, of Duasco, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, and I suspect this is being carried live, so there are thousands of Dominicans listening, both here and overseas. I have been advised um, that the me member, member of Parliament for Salisbury was invited to speak. He's done on the program. Wherever he is, I would like to say good morning to him. But it speaks to people's um, skewed um, uh, priorities that here it is, a major project is contract being signed for the benefits of your constituent. And I have, I'm seeing Dozens of people today, and I took time off as Prime Minister to come and, and be part of the ceremony. But others who have no, no other responsibility about being a power rep is not present today. And um, I guess um, that's how it is. But let me say that over the past uh, 52 mo months, the government of Dominican Labour Party has been erecting a platform with all the features of taking Dominica to the next level. This platform is being built on the foundations laid, laid down by government in transforming the country from one that was heavily dependent on one sector and one crop uh, to one in which there is greater diversification in its economic base. While proceeding to do so, we have established policy instruments aimed at upholding the dignity of our elderly and neglected citizens is the plight of those who, for some time, were known as squatters on government lands, provided assistance and support to single mothers, and ensured that no child was denied an opportunity to access an education that would prepare him or her to be successful in life. All these and other initiatives and programs are fully consistent with the philosophy of government to eradicate inequality and thus create a society of equal opportunity for all. Those who are opposed to us have hurled their venom at the beneficiaries of some of our key social programs. But ladies and gentlemen, friends, this morning, we continue our relentless march towards raising the living standards of the citizens and residents of our country. This ceremony which signals the commencement of work on the Grand Savan water supply system, is yet another step in our goal of improving the quality of life of Dominicans by ensuring that every community and every household has access to clean, portable, and affordable water. The availability of this essential requirement for life in the, in the approximately 500 households that will be served by the new system will be a blessing that will change their lives for the better. No longer will they have to truck in water at prohibitive cost to meet their daily requirements. No longer will they have to dread the arrival of the dry season when the absence of rain imposed additional stress on them. No longer will they have to be worried about the risk of contracting waterborne diseases by having to tap into untreated water intended to be used for irrigation purposes. And for those of you who take time off to travel around Dominica, will no doubt be amazed at the changes and improvements to our physical infrastructure that have occurred over the past five years. One of these traverses the communities of Salisbury and Grand Savon. I refer here, of course, to the rehabilitation of the West Coast Road on the West Coast Road, 
Residents of Salisbury and Grand Savan use this road daily to conduct their business, and many can attest to the added pleasure, the minimization of risk, and the economy on fuel consumption and repairs to vehicles that this rehabilitated road has brought about. My friends, as all of us know, these are challenging times, not only for us in Dominica, but throughout the Caribbean and in many of the developed countries of the world. The phenomenon of high indebtedness also and slow or sluggish growth and the pressure of unemployment are some of the overriding concerns for many leaders. This is because high debt makes it difficult to raise financing for vital infrastructure and other projects designed to spur growth and to increase employment. Fortunately for us, our record of prudent and responsible management of the financial and economic affairs of Dominica have earned the respect and the admiration of the global financing community. We have therefore been able to raise financing by floating the sale of government bonds. The offer fully subscribed in a short time at a rate of 1.99%, the lowest rate ever contracted within the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. While our detractors paint a picture of negativity about our country, the international community is giving a thumbs up to the performance of this government. The Minister with, with Responsibility for Water Resources has provided you details on this project, including the cost of approximately $2.54 million estimated for its completion. But we're making this money at a time when, I said, resources are difficult to come by. But because of our commitment <coughs> to the advancement of the country, because of our commitment to ensuring that we continue to uh, assist in transforming the way of life for people, we go out there and negotiate for the resources required to help build this country. And Minister Austri spoke to you about the investments that we have made in water in the last five years. We've gone into communities where governments before us felt that it was making no economic sense to invest money. And Duasco was not able to go out there and raise the money on its own. And therefore, we drew up a plan to address the water situation in Dominica. And communities which never had water, we recall communities like uh, uh, urban communities like Eggleston and Girodel and certain parts of Castle Comfort, middle class housing, people had no access to pipe and water. When we came into office, there were several communities which still had the asbestos pipes. And I was totally taken aback when I found out even communities like Goodwill on Federation Drive had asbestos pipes in recent time. And I indicated to Wasco that every single community where asbestos has to be replaced immediately. And the advice is in the cost, and we have removed every single um, asbestos pipe in the country. As we speak, in addition to this $2.54 million, there are several other water projects that are ongoing across Dominica. Um, several. We have Vekas, we just completed uh, about a year or so ago, the Penville Water Project. Um, we have in the PD7 constituency, we have in Grandfour, a major water project taking place in the community of Grandfour. Um, Ben's water project is ongoing. And it's important for you, the media, and you Dominicans, to drive to these places to see where we have to fetch the water, the access roads that we have, to, that we have to construct to bring the water to your homes. And Duasco is making an extraordinary effort in accessing the water where they, where they are uh, to bring to our homes. And major roads have to be constructed. We spent hundreds and mil well, millions of dollars, sorry, um, on access to the water source and to construct the tanks, as you will see and you will have heard in the Salisbury Water Project, we also have had to construct access roads. We have the WA1 Water Project. That's from the Antrim Roseau to serving the Roseau, uh, Greater Roseau area, where some $20 million um, um, have been spent, being spent on, this, on this project, $20 million. So 
I believe one of the challenges confronting this government is that it does not boast sufficiently of what it has been doing uh, in this country under tried and, and difficult circumstances. Because this morning, I've had to approve $2 million um, for the Ministry of Education uh, to make payments for students studying overseas, additional payments. We've gone above the budget, twice above what Parliament voted for uh, to assist students because of our commitment to assisting as many students as possible and our drive to ensuring that every child in our country, as far as practically possible, can, can get an education. But we continue to forge ahead with our various projects and programs. And one of the one such project is the is the eradication of pit latrines. There are some who have criticized it, who have looked down on people. Um, but our goal and objective in this government is to bring a sense of pride to our people. Because those who have, who have used pit latrines and those who have pit latrines know of the inconvenience that one experiences. That if nature calls at 10 o'clock at night and it's raining, you have to walk in the dark, in the, in the mud, to go to your pit latrine. And the UN itself, after I made the announcement, I didn't know the UN was studying this matter, launched a comprehensive program to eradicate pit latrines or these um, trough systems across the world. Because the UN estimates that it is cost, the presence of these pit latrines across the world is costing governments $2.24 billion every year because of diseases associated with the unhygienic un um, use of the speed latrines. And they are they're trying to develop all sorts of cheaper technologies um, to bring about uh, modern washrooms to people across the world. So even the United Nations is recognizing that, um, that this is a major um, issue, which requires a global response. So every member of the UN has taken up a responsibility to treat with um, the presence of pit latrines. And here in Dominica, um, there are some in the opposition who criticize that initiative. But we will forge ahead, and I'm happy, and I want to thank Doasco publicly for offering to partner with government in this effort um, towards bringing uh, modern washrooms to uh, to Dominicans. And I believe Doasco has offered to connect um, potential beneficiaries um, free of cost and, and, do, um, and, and also a free months um, grace period for the payment of the, of the water bills. And I think um, Doasco must be commended. We need other partners because this ought not only to be a government of Dominica initiative. Our social partners, our business partners uh, must join forces with us towards the eradication of pit latrines in Dominica. I am told that the, the contractor, FNC, con, con, Construction Limited, um, is the one contracted to, to do this project. I've been told that they, they usually complete their projects on time and within budget. So I want to urge the ASCO that we should not go any way beyond that 2.54, or as Doasco will find the money on its own. We have to keep within the budget and ensure that the quality of the work is up to the um, specifications in the contract. Um, but this was a, a tender. It was advertised, as far as advertised. About five or so companies I saw in the top six um, um, tendered. There are two aspects of the, of the, of the project, but it was just um, submitted in, in one package, and FNC, in a very transparent manner, um, was able to, to receive um, that contract. So I want to, to thank the media for, for being present, but to say that, that, and of course I look forward to bells. My understanding is that the, the tender process is, is complete. Yes. 
and you should be opening the documents uh, today. You opened yesterday, so you're ahead of me. So it's yesterday, because we have to go inside bells. We, I, I made that promise there to the people um, that we will come in very soon to sign this contract, uh, because that will be the last part of Dominica, which would not, which which would, which doesn't have uh, pipe on water. So this we are addressing this area. Um, that should be quite a bit of money, several millions I saw. What's it? 4.5. 4.5 million dollars. And people may say, well, little bells, small bells, rural village, they, they, they have plenty of rivers, they can use water from the river, they have a lot of soups and so forth, they can get water from that, so they, why give them water? That's how, that's the attitude of governments before this one. That is the, um, also Sylvania, Sylvania part of it. So, that's the attitude of governments before this one. But because of our compassionate nature and understanding and the need for us to take people from the working class to the middle class and from the middle class to the, to the upper class, that's what we're doing. And we have to do it by putting in place the infrastructure required. And with the presence of the water in Bells, that is going to increase the, the value of people's property is going to minimize any potential risk of health um, diseases by allowing people to have access to the water. And if there is one water project I look forward to is that of Bells. And I, I look forward to us very soon signing the contract for Bells because we shall, the money is available for this purpose and let's um, move forward with, with um, building and putting in place this water supply uh, for Bells. I want to thank you for inviting me, uh, Mr. Minister. And uh, it is sad I was looking forward to hear the words of my parliamentary colleague, Honorable Hector John, um, on this very important occasion. You know, people always want to associate themselves with, with negative vibes, so to speak. But I think it's going to be a time where he should have even brought a bottle of champagne for us here. Um, in celebration of this very important project because people from Salisbury are going to get employed and a lifelong challenge which they've had is being addressed um, by signing of this contract. And I, I would, well, he's not there and I, and I think I can speak on behalf of the people of Salisbury and uh, to say that I am, I am satisfied that all the residents in Grand Savon, many of whom I know personally, um, will be very happy uh, for this water because they've had a very, very difficult life um, because that system was set up for irrigation purposes and people have built homes there in recent times and they've had to rely on this irrigation system. So I'm sure they're going to be very happy um, for this water project and on their behalf I'd like to thank the Minister for Water Resources and the, the WASCO and the Governor Dominica. Um, so I am assuming the real responsibility of the parliamentary rep as the leader of the House of Assembly, so I am speaking on behalf of the Member of Parliament, and I'm, I'm sorry for not showing up this morning. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you.